All right. Started. Uh, let's go over announcements qu real quick. Welcome. Turn to your neighbor and say, I'm glad you're here. Turn to your other neighbor and say, I'm glad you're here too. Oh, come on, listen up. Tell them you're glad they're here. All right, y'all a little slow. Hey, I, I know it's not 1030 yet, but is Amy here? All right. Uh, quickly on announcements, um, Mills of Grace is the what, twenty twentieth? Uh, the marriage conference is the twenty twenty sixth and twenty seventh. It's the last. It's supposed to be the last. Okie dokie. Uh, we will. Uh, no, we're gonna, gonna do Mills of Grace, and we'll work out the schedule to get it covered. Okay. All right. Uh, quick, quick decisions on my feet. Right. That's good. On the twelfth, the kids are having a Valentine's party. Uh, so you guys that have kids from first to third, uh, sixth, see the children's ministry for that. Uh, Mexico trip in March. Those that are, uh, if you have kids that are going. Uh, they need to be serious about raising the money, but also uh, if your kids aren't going, uh, get your kids to help participate to send the other ones in the fundraiser stuff, all right? Say yes, Pastor. Well, that was weak. Okay, we have weddings and baby showers coming up. We have the shillings there. Baby shower is when? February 13th, and then we have, uh, uh, when are you guys getting married? March 19th, <clears throat> and you guys are the March 5th. All right, anybody else having a baby or getting married that I don't know about? All right, so you guys help and bless them. All right, I know I'm doing this a little different and doing the announcements before we get started, but we're going to try to change things up and keep you on your toes, amen? All right, what else we got? Uh, the stirring in April, be praying and getting ready for that. Uh about it. Marriage conference, the 26th and 27th, and then intro to the point. If you are going uh, to intro to the point today, raise your hand. Okay, just one, two. Nick is Nick is coming. All right, what time were you told? Five. What time were you told? Sir? Five. Okay, good. There were some, we were going to do it at noon right after this service, but uh, Nick took off so he could be here uh, this evening, so uh, I have to do the one at five. So if there was anyone expecting to do it at noon, I was going to do two, so uh, that works out perfect. So uh, five o'clock, enter to the point at our Fifth Street building right across behind here. You'll see this old Dr. Weinblatt's office if you know Old Temple, all right? No destiny classes tonight. But if you are deacon or pastor or you have access to the system in the database and you would like to learn a little bit, I'm going to do a class right after Intro to the Point to uh, show you a few things and, and get you going. And then we're working on getting everybody acclimated and into the system. So uh, if you uh, would like to come to that, please do. That's those that are, have access to our database. Uh, and if you don't know what I'm talking about, you probably don't have it. All right. Anything else? Youth. Yes. For what? For intro to the point. Does anybody need child care for intro to the point? Nick doesn't. You guys? No? No? All right. Good. Awesome. Uh, but still be here anyway, Crystal, just so you can drive all the way in. Oh, okay. All right. What else we got? Anything? There's more, but nothing that we need to talk about right now. Are you guys uh, ready? Yeah. All right. Are you guys ready? Yeah. Kirk says no. <laughs> Ashley's only got part of her makeup on, so I know she's not. <laughs> she gave me that same look you got. Are you, 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 I, you, amen. 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 
Amen. All right, turn your, to your neighbor and say, we're breaking generational curses. <laughs> All right, y'all ready? I hope so. It's great to see you, and you don't have to listen to my singing now on the online. You can, you can. <laughs> I forget my mic's on, and then it goes over the over the stream, and I, I I'm a preacher. I know what I'm good at. Singing is not one of them. Amen. All right, are y'all ready now? Mr. Drummer Boy back there, you ready? Okay. All right, are y'all, let's all stand. do the opener. Okay. Uh-huh. I'm waiting on you. Yes.
Dear Heavenly Father, we come to you this morning, and Father, our heart's cry is that you would have your way in this place, that you would fill this place to overflowing. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. You may be seated. Uh, ushers, come on up. If you are uh, here for the very first time, could you raise your hand, please? Sherry and uh, Joey, you guys have, or you make sure that we've got those guys. All right. If you've been, if you're, if if you're uh, coming and it's it's uh, your second or third time, raise your hand. Awesome. Welcome. 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 All right, if you are new and been here just the last three or four months, raise your hand. All right, awesome, welcome, 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 welcome. Um, For those that in the last three or four months, six months, if you have not gone to uh, Intro to the Point, I recommend that you come tonight at 5 o'clock. Get to sit down with Pastor Nett and I and and Pastor James and Wren. Hear the heart, understand... uh, uh, how we got started, what Dust of the Glory Ministries and the Point Christian Fellowship is about. And uh, we would uh, love to sit down and answer your questions and open ourselves up to uh, fellowship and connecting, hopefully hopefully encouraging you to uh, get connected here, but more importantly, that we encourage you to get connected where God's called you to be. Amen? And hopefully it's here. We're praying. We're crossing our fingers and, and uh, trying to persuade you. Not seriously. We want you to go where God's called you to be. So uh, we're believing and uh, we believe that God places the members within the body and we believe the body, uh, every person of the body has something to do. So if you're called here, you have a job here to do. If you're called somewhere else, you have a job to do there. So we want you to get connected. Amen. Amen. Turn to your neighbors, say it's tithe and offerings time. Um, the Lord says, test me in this area. He says, bring your first fruits, your tithes and your offerings to the storehouse. And just to let you know, our heart is to uh, be a blessing and uh, uh, acquire as many people as we can to do this work. This uh, doesn't all go to, to me and Pastor Nett. We have uh, pastors that have the, uh, the oversight of the church, a praise and worship leader, our, our daycare, our, our children's pastor, all of those things. Uh, to pay, and but also we also are going to Mexico, we're going to Peru, we're going to Philippines, and then also China. So um, that takes money to do that, amen. And we also are feeding the neighborhood once a w- uh, once a month, and then we're, our heart's desire is to build up a place that we can feed, that we can shelter, that we can clothe, uh, that we can educate, and prepare, and qu- uh, equip, uh, teach people to fish, not just give them fish, amen. We want it all. Our heart's desire is body, soul, and spirit. Amen? Amen. All right, let's bow our heads. And if you ushers, go ahead and start passing around. Dear Heavenly Father, we just ask that you bless this offering. Go ahead, guys, start passing. Uh, uh, We ask that you would bless this offering, Father God. Bless the giver, Father God, those that are unable to give. We ask that you bless them as well. You say you give seed to the sower. So, Father God, let them recognize and receive that blessing that they may sow into the kingdom, that they may be blessed a hundredfold. And, Father God, you would redeem the rest of their money, Father. We ask, Father God, that you would give us uh, wisdom on how to manage the money, Father God, and that we would cause it to grow and extend. We ask that, Father, everything that we do, we have favor with. We ask, Father God, that um, you cause everything that we buy, everything that we use to last longer than it should. We thank you for it, and we praise you for it. And all God's people said, Amen. amen and amen. Now look to your neighbor and say, I came to get into his presence. So whatever your issue is, leave it right there in that chair and stand up and let's go together to the court, to the throne, and allow the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords to have his way. Amen? If that's your desire, I ask that you come down here and worship the king. I also ask if you didn't make the bucket, you put it in the treasure chest. But let's worship him. Come on.
will dance, we will dance for your glory. We will dance, we will dance for your glory. We will dance for your glory, Lord. We will lift up a shout to adore you. Every sound that we make, it is for you. We will dance for your glory, Lord. Come on, sing it to him again.
of our praise and honor and glory.
sing that again. Come on, every voice in the house. Make it a true cry. you want him. Tell him how much you want to be overcome. Tell him. Oh, Father, fill this place with your glory. Cause, Father God, the river of life to bubble up and flow up and out of us, Father God. Oh, Father God, flood this place, Father God, with your presence. Allow us, help us, Father God, to put aside everything good, bad, and indifferent, and allow the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords to come flooding out, Father God. Oh, Father, you're worthy. Thank you, Jesus. Father, we love you. We praise you. Father, open our ears. Open our eyes. Touch our hearts. Break our wills and submit completely unto you. Let us be bridled. and tell them how much you love them, how much you desire to get to know them, be blessed by their presence every week. Brandon, there's some seats over here on the side down here. Oh, Shelby's still in them. Just having push scoot over. Good morning. Um, there is a philosophy, I guess, if you 
a strategy, a thought. Let's just leave it at that. That when you your your seating becomes seventy five percent full, that you need to start looking at having a second service or look at another building. So um, it's been several people have come up to me during the service and talked about how many people are here and all that and 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 to be honest with you guys it's it's not much more than than it has been or was or whatever but i will say this that it, god's been laying on my heart and pressing on me um i'm kc and tv bought the first baptist property and uh i believe that they're going to lease out the youth portion that was back in the back where they held their services so if you guys would just join with me in prayer and uh on that if that's what god wants us to do that would be made clear and then the, be made away um because i do believe that we need more room amen? amen and uh if not we can go to two services uh, uh if we need to that's fine but um the daycare is also exploding, and if we opened it up, we probably could go to 200 kids because we got 100 and, and something, and we basically have to start turn, we are, we're turning kids away. Um, so, y'all just be in prayer as as God's moving. Amen. Amen. All right, turn to your neighbors, say, God loves you, and you're a part. So figure it out and get in position. If you're already in position. Forgive me, I'm sorry. I love you anyway. <laughs> okay, Wednesday night we started talking about, I, I had a little thing that dropped in my heart and I started preaching on it, and it just got a little deeper and a little deeper, and so I want to I wanna pick up where we left off on that. So if you would, go with me to Matthew chapter 10. I'm going to kind of um, recap Wednesday, and then I'm going to pick up, and hopefully I won't get, I, I messed up. I should have brought my Bible. I have a Bible on this. Um, what did I say? All right, thank you. I just did that to see if you're all paying attention. Okay, uh, do I want to read all this? What time is it? It's 11.30. Woo! Y'all are in trouble. No, actually... Hopefully we can go back into praise and worship, actually worship, and uh, um, I believe there's some salvations and some deliverances for today. So uh, uh, I need to move on and get started. So let's, um, I'm going to give me New King James, and let's start with verse 1, and I'll do it this way. Let's just read a little bit at a time and go. All right, and when he had called a, give, give, uh, yeah, I'll change it, never mind. I have it, I was like, why is that different? All right, and when he had called his 12 disciples to him, he gave them power over unclean spirits to cast them out and to heal all kinds of sickness and all kinds of disease. Now, the names of the 12 apostles were this, first Simon, who was called Peter, and Andrew, his brother, James, the son of Zebedee, and John, his brother and uh, Philip, and Bartholomew, and Thomas, and Matthew, the tax collector, and James, the son of Alphaeus, and whatever that is, uh, and whose surname was Thaddeus, uh, uh, Simon the Canaanite, and Judas Iscariot, who also betrayed him. Um, don't want to stop there. Uh, let's, let's go to verse 5. These 12 Jesus sent out and commanded them, saying, Do not go into the way of the Gentiles, and do not enter in the city of the Samaritans, but go through to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. As you go, preach, saying, The kingdom of, of, of heaven is at hand. Heal the sick, cleanse the lepers, raise the dead, cast out demons. Freely you have received, freely you give. Provide neither gold nor silver nor copper in your money belts, nor bag for your journey nor two tunics, nor sandals, nor staffs, for a worker is worthy of his food or hire, uh, if you've got King James. Now, whatever city you enter into, uh, we'll go get to that in just a second. 
All right, um, the, the way I opened up Wednesday is we're, we're, he's talking to the 12 disciples, and he's uh, saying, come, follow me, uh, and, and I'm going to send you out, okay? And so um, what the Lord dropped in my heart is, okay, uh, he's talking to the 12 disciples. Uh, they're not apostles yet, so uh, I, I, let's put ourselves, and I felt like the Lord told me this, let's put ourselves in that position that we are the disciples, Okay, because we should be disciples, and uh, we should be disciples of Jesus. We should not, and we talked about this Wednesday, we should not be coming for social, though we have social. We should not be coming just to hear the rules and the regulations. We should not be coming just to get our fix or get our praise on or whatever. We should be coming to understand and grab hold of what the king is speaking to us and do what the king says. We need to follow the king, Amen. All right, so we need to be disciples, dis d disciples of Christ, amen? And so he's talking to the disciples, and he's talking to the 12, and, he, and, and they name out the 12 disciples. So I like to go, and I look up the names, and, and, and it's apparent that he's identifying what a disciple looks like. If you look at Peter, his name was Simon, and then they ch he changed it to Peter, which Simon is to hear intelligently, and Peter is a, a, a portion of the rock or a piece of the rock. So uh, it's, it's uh, 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 kind of obvious that we need to hear intelligently that God's speaking. We also need to be a piece of the rock. Amen? Okay, and then he's taught, then the, well, let's look at the rest of them. And then Andrew, which means a strong man. You get, you get changed from a weak person to a, a strong man because you take on the Holy Ghost because it's not our power, it's his power, amen? And then James is to supplant, and supplant means to take the place of another. And uh, uh, it, uh, the, he's the son of um, whoever that was, and his name is uh, Zebedee, and it means abundant. So you need to abundantly take on. Amen. Not just a portion of Jesus. You need to abundantly take on all that is, he is. Amen. All right. And then uh, there is John, jo God's favor. And then Philip, warlike. We need to be warlike. Amen. We got to violently take the kingdom. Amen. We have to violently take the kingdom. Amen. We got to violently put off the old man and put on the new man. Amen. And then Bartholomew, which means the son that suspends the waters. And the way the Lord expand, uh, uh, told me that is that basically bringing the water to where it's needed and, and placing, uh, directing the water to where it goes, the living water, okay? Uh, I know that's kind of stretched for some of you, but uh, just bear with me. And then there is Thomas, the twin, and uh, we need to act like our twin Jesus, amen? Oh, 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 some people are not, oh, he's not a twin, he's oh, way up here. No, we are in him, we, he is us, we are him, we are one, we are his body, he is Christ, amen? Amen, we need to be just like him. All right, and then Matthew, the gift of Jehovah, and then James again is to plant, but this, this uh, 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 take the place of another, but his father is, his name means chief, so uh, we, we're taking the place of uh, the chief, so we're no longer the Tell, we're the head. We're no longer beneath, we're above, all right? Come on, I know that's hard for some of you to, to accept, but just bear with me, okay? I'm just, just this, you can throw this part out if you want to, but I believe that it has, uh, I believe that it has value. I, what I'm preaching, you can take this piece out and, and put it aside and not grab what I'm, I'm, I'm saying, but I believe it has value because I believe that's what God's saying. These are characteristics of people who are disciples, all right, and then Simon to hear again, but his father, uh, 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 he's from uh, Canaanite, which it means to humble. Uh, so not only do we need to hear intelligently, uh, but we also need to be humble about it, how much God lays on us, amen? And then Judas was praised, but uh, he was Iscariot, which means hireling, um, and we need to quit prostituting our praise. And Judas went away, and then Matthias came, and he's the gift of God again. So basically, the praise got changed back to gift. All right? All of that, he's calling them and saying, follow. And he said, don't go the way of the Samaritans, or don't go the way of the pagans or the Gentiles. Don't go those ways. And so what he's saying is, look, come with me, follow, come follow me, and I'm going to send you out, and I'm going to send you, and I'm going to start, uh, we're going to start laying out the kingdom. We're, I'm gonna start, we're gonna, we're gonna precursor before everything's done. We're gonna start establishing the kingdom. The kingdom is now. Now, now later on, it, it, he's gonna, he's gonna say it's coming, but it's really here because he's here. All right. 
Uh, and so, he, bottom line, he's giving them a foretaste of the kingdom. So he says, I'm going to send you out. And he blows on them, and they have the hot power of the Holy Spirit. And they go, and they cast out demons, they heal, and they're all excited, and they come back, and they're all fired up. But what I, what I want to get to you is, is that he's calling to us. He's calling to us, all, that have, uh, all of us that say that we are following Jesus. And he's saying, be a disciple. But listen, uh, be a disciple. And, and those 12 disciples, look at their names and see how they affect. And this is, should be, you should be checking those off. Is that in my life? And then he said, don't go the way of the Samaritans or the Gentiles. The Gentiles means pagan. It means the heathen or the worldly people. And the Samaritans means the watchtower, which means those that lift up. And when you look up and you, uh, you watchtower, you see what's coming. You direct, right? And so uh, what the Lord spoke in my heart was it's those that morally think they're right and good and uh, basically make up their own law. So don't go the way of the Samaritan. Don't go the way of the world and don't go the way of making your own way. Go to the lost sheep of Israel. And you say, well, all right, we're New Testament. That's all Old Testament a little bit. It's kind of in between. And he's telling uh, with the, the gospel is coming to the Israelites first. Yes, but I also want to apply it today. And I want us to understand and see that he's saying don't stay in your worldly ways and don't make up your own law. And go to the children of God, Israel, and you don't know who the children of God are. Because they may look worldly, they may look of law, but they, uh, they may be a, a child of God being wooed in. They may be marked, and they just haven't got in yet. See, God is outside of time, and he's in the process of working it through and in them. And so he's sending us to the lost children of Israel, or the lost children. Amen? So don't try to do it worldly-wise, and don't try to do it making your own law. Follow me and do it Jesus or the Messiah or the anointed way. Amen? He's saying, come follow me, and let's do this the new way. Don't make up your own law. Don't follow the... See, we got so much in the church, we want to bring in the old worldly ways. But see, the thing is, is some of the worldly stuff needs to be redeemed. It's a matter of the heart. Amen? But he says, don't go the way of the world. Don't go the way of making your own law. See, we make our own laws. See, we, whatever we were taught by mama and them grandmama and them, whatever church we went to, and whatever was preached mainly in that church is the law that we then take and we modify it by the way we hear it, and then we apply it to the way we want to apply it to the things that we want to keep and the things that we don't want to keep. And see, we're not Israelites, and we don't have the law that was given from God, but we have the law that was given down that passed through the way of God and the way of godly ways, but then we modified it and changed it and, and fixed it the way we want to, so we then create our own law. And then we could go in this whole room, and there's 150 people in here, and we could go in this whole room, and I bet you we'd have 150 laws. And so what God is saying is, look, when we're going to invoke the kingdom, I don't want you to do it your way. I want you to do it my way. And I don't want you to do it the worldly way. I want you to do it my way. Follow me. But he's sending us to the world. He needs us. He's chosen to use us to go minister the gospel. He is invoking you, and he's saying, look, be a disciple. And, and let me ask you a question. Are you affected? No, no don't, don't, don't raise your hand. Don't expose yourself. But are you eff effective preaching the gospel? Just, just think of a number in your head of people you've gotten saved in the last year. And so what I, what I feel like the Lord is telling to us is, look, I want you to be real effective. And I want, you should be casting out demons. You should be laying hands on the sick. And miracles should be happening. But you should be getting people saved. And the reason why I think probably is is because we're probably going the way of the world or where we're going the way of the, our own law. Right? And so he's saying, go the way, follow me, the anointed word. And the only way to follow the anointed word is to hear the Holy Spirit and then grab the Bible that he's teaching us and then be led by that and go to wherever he says go. 
Because he says, look, don't go to, don't go to the world and uh, don't go to the, to the, uh, uh, the, 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 the religious folk. And, and, and we could be, that could be a lot of us in here. Could be all of us in some things. But you say, well, then who are we supposed to go to? That's why we need the anointed word. Because we don't know what is worldly and we don't know what is, is our own way. And he said, well, you're confusing me because I thought we were supposed to go seek the lost. Yes, he said, the lost, the lost people of Israel, God's people. Do you know who God's people are? If you looked around this room, could you tell who God's people are? Oh, we, we should be able to tell. But the question is, is some of them, they look the way, they sound the way, but deep down in their heart, it's black. Or it's not given over yet. And this, I, this, is not to con, this is not to condemn anybody. Please understand me. I'm not trying to condemn anybody. But my thing is, is we don't know the heart of man. Somebody could praise good. They could have a good gift. They could cry every time they come in here. They could have all this good stuff. But there is no evidence or no understanding of what the heart has really done. And the only one that knows that is who? The Holy Spirit. Jesus Christ, the anointed one. So he says, don't follow the world's way of determining what's good. Don't follow the way of you determining what's good or the laws that you make up. Follow the anointed Jesus Christ, and I'll send you to the lost people. I'll send you to the ones that need the word. That's good. That's good preaching. I, 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 don't, I don't care who you are. That's good preaching. God needs you. He's inviting you to participate. Now, I would like to believe that everybody that's new in here and all these new faces are because people have been talking and spreading the word and, got, and getting people saved, and they're coming in and getting saved. I don't know, I don't, I don't know if that's the case. I hope it is. But my, 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 my calculations is if all of you just got one this year, we would have to have four services. We should be multiplying. Now, in the natural, why are we so in, inclined to produce there? And we're afraid to produce in the kingdom because we don't see ourselves worthy. But it's, you don't have to make yourself worthy. The King of kings and the Lord of lords came to make you worthy. Amen? This is not about being good or bad. This is about connecting to him. He'll work out the good and bad at you. Because if you get in his presence and you're face to face with him, I guarantee you, you're going to stop doing what you're doing. When you keep doing what you're doing that you know you're not supposed to, you're not getting in his presence. Or you're getting only so far in and then he starts dealing with it and you go, oh, I, oh, I got to go do this. I got to get busy. I got to work today. Hey, I know, I've been there. I'm in all in my neighborhood right now. <laughs> Amen? But he needs you. He's wanting to send you out. He, he wants you, don't, but don't go the way of the pagans. Don't go the way of the world. Don't go the, the way that uh, establish their own rules. That's kind of it in a nutshell, what we talked about the other night. I want to talk about what happens now. As we sit in here, where are you? Are you in the world? Or have you made your own law and regulations and rules? Are you of the house of God? Or are you a disciple? Worldly ways, they, they, don't want, they don't want any change. They want to stay worldly. The, the, the ones that make up their own law or live by the law, they, they justify themselves by the law. It's how good they can be or how good they can get other people to be. And then the lost sheep of Israel, they truly want God, but they really don't know. They don't know that they want him, or they don't know their heart is pure and ripe and ready to be, be, be touched. And those are the ones that the disciple needs to go to. So I want to challenge you is, are you a disciple? Are you a disciple? Or are you just coming because you heard a good message? 
Are you coming because there's excitement going on? Are you coming because I'm a great preacher? I know that's a good reason. I know. Are you coming because we got good music? I know we got good music. Amen? The drummer's a little shaky, but the lead, the lead singer is awesome. Amen? I know we have good worship. We have the most awesome pastors. Y'all think I'm talking about me. I'm not talking about me. I'm talking about the pastors of the house. Loren and James. They, they love you. They love you unconditionally. I don't. I don't at all. <laughs> but are you a disciple? Are you truly a disciple? Because things need to start changing if we're disciples. From me on down. Because I think what he said is, let's look at five again. He said, but go, rather go to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. And as you go, preach, saying the kingdom is at hand. He didn't say get saved. If you're religious, you're not going to like me much, but stay around. I, I promise you'll be blessed. Heal the sick, cleanse 